Welcome to Chandwell. My name's Michael and I've finished the second building in the back of the commercial street that runs behind my station. Here's a short look at the bits I did to get this one completed. This building has elements which are slightly below ground level. I cut the parts needed and glued them into a simple box shape to represent the ground. This will be fronted by a wall so that the people staggering home from buffers don't fall down the hole. I wasn't sure what to do around the fire escape, whether or not to have the steps crossing the gap like this. I wrapped the components in scale scenes ashlar texture and then used a scale model scenery right angle jig to help me get it aligned properly. A few clamps held it in place whilst the PVA glue went off. I make downspouts really simply as they don't need to be very high fidelity in Engage. I use a sharpie marker to colour the edge and sides of a bit of cereal packet. Using a rule, I then slice off the edge to leave a little strip just under a millimetre wide. I use the rule on the side of the building, and using a fine tip applicator, I run a small bead of PVA glue along the side of the building. The little strip of downspout can then be easily dropped into the glue and straightened with a piece of card. I added a kink at the bottom to avoid a window, and I used multiple pieces to hint at a downspout going behind the fire escape. I made a template out of 1mm card for the ground. I covered this with a rectangle of paper with scale scenes cobblestone sets running down one edge. I then covered this with PVA and added scale scenes tarmac on top. I'd cut a rough edge on the tarmac to allow the cobblestones to shine through where the tarmac had started to disintegrate. The piece will then just drop into place and I think the effect's going to work. I used a couple of small pieces of card to represent steps down to the cellar door. So the building is now ready to position on the layout. I used PVA glue along the bottom and sides and dropped it into place. I had to remove a bit of the roof of the building next door to get it to sit flush. Once in place, I used PVA again and slotted the ground into position. I get colour variation in the ground sometimes because of the textures and the varnish that I use, but I don't mind that, it does blend in over time. I mismeasured the template and I've ended up with a gap along the front of the retaining wall. But from any typical viewing angle, this should never be seen. I used a stack of three pieces of 1mm card to make a concrete base for the fire escape, which I painted a dirty kind of colour. I ran a thin bead of PVA along the base of the wall and used tweezers to position small bits of woodland scenic underbrush and scatter to represent weeds. With the cobblestones showing too, I think this works quite well. I chopped up a cocktail stick to represent chimney pots. I find it easier to glue them into place and then paint them in situ. I use terracotta and brown and then a bit of black to give the impression that I want. I use dark brown paint to add rust to the fire escape. By putting the paint on the brush and then wiping most of it off onto a bit of tissue, a dry brush technique can be used to add subtle detail. I finished off the effect by adding ballast to this part of the track. Laying ballast requires the use of a lot of water and my retaining wall is made of inkjet printed paper. I always apply four coats of AK Interactive Matte and Ultramatte varnish, but I added an extra thick bead along the base of the wall to prevent any water soaking up the inside of the card. Once this was dry, I poured on the ballast and roughly arranged it with my fingers. I used a soft brush from a kids painting set to smooth the ballast down and expose the edges of the sleepers. Prior to spraying water, I used copier paper to cover my buildings and prepare the station for the oncoming rain. The best bottle I've ever found for this job is Aussie Miracle Hair Insurance Conditioner. I fill the bottle with tap water and then spray repeatedly to completely soak the ballast. This keeps it in place and prevents it from bunching up into globules as the glue is added later. I use a dilute solution of PVA and water with a bit of brown paint and some washing up liquid to help break the surface tension. This gets dribbled all over the ballast using a pipette and it completely soaks the track. I use a bit of tissue to soak up the visible water on the retaining wall. Now it's a case of waiting and hoping, hoping that the varnish does its job and that the printed surface does not bleed. 
I really don't want to have to make this retaining wall again. Hello to channel member Brian, who upgraded to a Chandwell business owner this week. A channel membership really helps support my channel and I hope you enjoy seeing the videos a couple of days early. It's time to start a new building for Market Street. I may do the next one as an Inkscape tutorial. I know that not everyone likes that kind of video, but please let me know in the comments if you have any strong preference. Here's a look back at how I planned Market Street. I don't quite know what's coming next, but in the meantime, thank you for watching, stay safe, and I'll see you then.